Before we go any further, I would like to introduce our coaches that are here with us tonight. First, uh, behind me to my left, uh, our defensive coordinator, assistant head coach, Coach Poon, Gilbert Poon Garrison. Um, to his left is our offensive line coach, Coach Ryan Angel. Just to the left of him was our head JP coach and also varsity assistant coach, Coach Matt Peavy. And to his left is our varsity running backs coach, also our girls basketball coach, uh, Jason Lanier. Not with us this evening is uh, Coach Coach Derek James, who is our receivers and defensive backs coach, and Coach Mike Hartman, who is also a defensive backs coach. They are at a, um, a baseball uh, event this evening up in Atlanta, and we're not able to be here with us this evening. So we'll be covering for them. Um, before we go any further, I'd like to say just a couple things about this season. Uh, it was it was a very eventful year. Obviously, everyone knows we moved up from single A to double A and uh, into a very, very difficult region. When you look at it, there were nine teams in our region. Uh, it's a very good competition. Uh, three out of the four teams that made the playoffs, everyone except us, uh, had uh, one out of the first round and progressed to the second round of state playoffs. Uh, Benedictine almost won their second round game. Um, by day they went into a, a little bit of a problem, but uh, McIntosh played Brooks County very well. So our region represented very well in the playoffs, uh, and it showed how difficult our schedule was throughout the year. I told our kids when the season started, we could have a better football team than we did in 2011 and end up with not as good a record. And that's exactly what took place. Uh, I don't think there's any question that we ended up with a better football team this year than we did last year, but we had, a, we had a really, really tough region compared to the region that we came out of last year. And there were no gimmies on our schedule. Kids played extremely hard. They did everything we asked them to do. Uh, they, 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 never, they never gave up, they continued to play. And that's a step that we took from last year to this year where, where there were definitely some games we stepped on the field in 2011 where I don't think our kids truly believe they could win a football game. Especially when we lined up against Wilcox and Seminole and some of those guys. This year, when you look back, we were in every football game to the very end. We, had, we were the only team to lead by Daddy High School during the regular season at any point during the football game. Had a chance to win that football game as well. Um, and you know, really the only game that we just didn't show up and play happened to be in the playoffs, unfortunately for us. But, but if you look back on our season and the year that these young men have, have had, um, this group of seniors will leave here with winning, making the state playoffs back to back for the first time. And now, there's a lot of controversy over is it the first time. There have been some teams in the past in Bacon County that made the playoffs in back-to-back -back years to other teams, but they were not state playoffs, they were region playoffs. This is the first time that they've made the state playoffs two years in a row. So this group of seniors is able to say that they did something very special. The group of juniors that are here have an opportunity to do it again next year. The group of sophomores that are here have a chance to do it all four years of their high school career, which has never been done. So there are a lot of things that are still in front of this group, even though we say goodbye to, to nine outstanding young men and outstanding football players this evening. We will recognize them as the evening goes on, uh, and we will talk about them a little bit more in detail. What we're going to start with tonight, I'm going to do something just a little bit different than I did last year. I'm going to, to, to read off a list of thank yous to our boosters, anyone that was a $500 booster member and above, I am going to, to recognize them. Um, if anyone representing any of these people or businesses are present, if you would wait, and when I'm done, if you would come forward, we have a letter, a frame letter that you can take to put at your place of business to show our appreciation for the things that you have done. Um, I'm going to quickly read uh, a portion of this letter just so that, uh, so that you'll understand how important the folks that, that we're recognizing in this period uh, mean to us. It says on behalf 
of the entire Red Raider football program, coaches and players, I would like to thank you for your value and support of our program during the 2012 football campaign. Communities such as Allen, Bacon County are hidden treasures across the state of Georgia that still understand that a young person's life can be influenced through athletic participation. <clears throat> To compete on championship level in Georgia AA football, it requires that resources are provided for these players to succeed. There is no way a small athletic department such as ours could ever finance the quality of program we wish to have in Bacon County. It is directly due to a wonderfully committed people such as to wonderful committed people such as yourself that we have been able to pull this program from the bottom of the state's football programs to one that has garnered tremendous respect from around this state. That's, that's just one of the paragraphs. I won't go through the entire letter, but I hope that portrays a little bit about how, how important uh, what those folks that we're fixing to recognize are in our athletic program in general, but specifically tonight in our football program, because the things that you see up here tonight that we're going to be giving away are 100% a part of, are, are up here because of these folks. This is not athletic money. This is 100% booster funds. It takes care of everything that we do tonight. There's about, there's over $3,000 worth of stuff that we will give out this evening, and it all comes 100% from the folks that I'm fixing to recognize. So I'll recognize those that were $500 members and above, and if anyone is present at the end, if you would jump forward. Uh, Wheeler Insurance, Mike Wheeler, Vickers Cabinets, the Medicine Cabinet, Subway, State Farm, South Georgia Primary Care, Slash Pine and Timber, Scott's Pools, Robert Goodman CPA, Prince Ford, Pope Construction, Parker Food Mart, Noble Stumping, Miles Auto Sales, Meadows Construction, MBG Marketing, KNL Barbecue, Julie Specialties, and Verizon Wireless, HH Equipment, Georgia Stumping, First National Bank, Dr. McQuaid, Dr. Dean, Dairy Queen, Clean Air and Electric, Barber Recycling, Bacon County Hospital, and Alma Pack. All of those, and, and Alma Auto Shoot. All of those that I just recognized were $500 members. The next we have are $750 members. We have Cody Electric, BYRT, Army National Guard, and Mershon Agro Mershon. Then we have some $1,000 members. We have South Georgia Diagnostic, which is Dr. Carter, Richmond Baking, Lamar's Pharmacy, Kevin Carter Automotive, Joe Hayes and Company, Alan Telephone Company. We had one $2,500 sponsor this year. That was uh, Judge Ken Futch. And then we had one $5,000 sponsor, and that was Mr. Ted Burke. So those are all of the sponsors that were $500 and above. And I'd like to say once again on behalf of all of them how much we appreciate it. If any of you happen to be present tonight, if you would come forward, uh, we would like to present you with a, with a letter this time.
to me in my program, what we do uh, in my broadcast media production class at Lake County High School. Um, we wouldn't have been able to put all this together without some of the sponsors I want to specifically recognize. Uh, and I hope for some of us here tonight just to begin to recognize them by name. The C. Bennett Johnson Insurance is our title sponsor. This year, uh, Foster Rolling Auto Mart uh, sponsored the coaches show as well as uh, part of the halftime show. Uh, Coens of Alma, the halftime show, Southeast Propane, the halftime show, and Flash Boots. We do have a certificate for you um, if you will come forward at this time.
senior Matt Griff.
program over to Coach Poole. He is going to discuss and explain to you our regular club awards, and he's going to be uh, in charge of presenting those to our uh, football players this evening.
First year, 11th grade, Kyle Wilcox. All right. Will Newberry.
One there. Kyrie James.
second team all-region offensive lineman, Kyrie Jenkins. All-State 
quarterback Matt Three. Yeah, 
saying now, but a matronage, nobody wants to be scouts before. But we, we asked them to step in and be every other team's best player and be that player in practice. And sometimes he beat us in practice. But he gave us as hard a look as any young man could get. And he took the punishment and he got right back up and told the defense I'll score on the field. And he did. <laughs>
He led the team in pass breakups. Uh, he was very high in the team in tackles. And I'll let you tell when I announce his name. If you'll turn to the statistics page in your program, you can see his final numbers. And this player, which I am speaking of, is TJ Watt. All right. All right. He had 17 solos. I'm sorry, he had, he had 17 solos, 13 assists. He had two pass breakups, and he had three interceptions. Oh, I'm sorry, he, he's correcting me. And it might be my I'm going to the stats. He said he had four interceptions. <laughs> <laughs> Not these strongest, but one of our strongest kids. 
His, his attitude on the field is relentless. And he plays that way. And he never, ever gets tired. And I've only coached one other kid like that. And I tell him all the time that he reminds me of that kid that he continues to play that way. And he continues to do the things that he's doing right now. He will be a great football player. I, I, in my short time of coaching, I've only had one defensive lineman break, actually two defensive linemen break the 60 tackle mark, and this young man made 59 tackles this year. And that young man, the best defensive lineman, is Anthony Florence. Pay attention to him, he said. 
Last year, he was, he was one of our greatest offensive linemen, and he's a young kid, he's a sophomore, and uh, said this year, I, I see even bigger things going, going for him. Uh, he never complained about anything I asked him to do, and I, 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 I believe I asked a lot of him. Uh, but he just worked hard. That's all he would do. He would, he would ask me, Coach, are my steps right? What about the angle? Am I getting to the mic on time? And all I can say is, keep doing your best. You're, you're doing fine. And uh, I coach him up, but uh, he's played it all the talk. Um, he, he's not a, he's not somebody who talks a whole lot, but he lets his actions uh, really, really do all the talking for him. And it's an, it's an honor to uh, present this award to the best offensive lineman this year. It's Ryan Howard. Yeah. 
I'm not getting a lot of playing time, but we'll work his way back to the start of the road and put uh, an older linebacker on the bench to play well for us this year. Yeah.
So um, I apologize when he comes up. We are going to recognize two young men for this report tonight, um, both of which at one point during the year we thought we had lost completely. Uh, we got a report back on one that he was out for the entire season probably with a shoulder injury, and then we got a report back on one that is very unlike anything I've ever seen. Uh, Dr. Carlson says, you know, he's, he's completely torn every ligament in his knee. Um, he goes about two weeks, and I'm going to give you a quick story on him. He goes about two weeks and doesn't, doesn't practice, but he's in practice every single day. And then one Saturday, we're at a coach's meeting, and we step outside the door, and this young man comes up, and he's pouring with sweat. And I said, what in the world you been doing? Keep in mind, he can't play because he's got, he's torn every leg in his knee. He had been asking me all along, coach, when you play, when you play. But he can't play. You got the ligaments in your knee. He can't play. Well, he comes up pouring with sweat that day. I say, so what you been doing? Been playing tennis. <laughs> what you mean you been playing tennis? He said, I've been playing tennis. And I said, well, if you can play tennis, you can play football. He said, I told you. <laughs> <laughs> so the next week, his mom signed a release. Um, <laughs> Definitely at the uh, disagreement of the doctor, because he was not real happy. But his mom signed a release and said he could play. We got him a knee brace, and he played the next, I don't know, five or six football games for us this year. Outstanding young man. Both of these young men are outstanding. Uh, the first award uh, goes to a sophomore that could not play last year due to a health issue. Came back this year. Ended up, we thought we were going to lose him to a shoulder injury. He, he comes back and was able to continue playing. Ends up starting on offense and on defense for us. So the first comeback player of the year award goes to Dylan Mike. Thank you. 
we were standing next to Anthony Floyd because he had to face me. Offensive lineman my size all year long. It's only going to be. And not only did he face me, but he beat me. And he beat him on that. The next award is going to be presented by Coach Angel.
Post Jones. I'm not Coach Jones. Um, all right. This this next award is is named the Heart and Soul Award, and as as simple as the name sounds, this this. This award, means, this award means a lot. Uh, without, without your heart, you're not going to live. And, and without this guy, this next player, this house, again, an outstanding young man. This, this team couldn't have survived. Uh, he, he's a great leader. He's coachable. And above that, he's passionate. And everything he does, his, his passion just its overwhelming. He gets the other players to, to play at their best potential. And I can't remember how many times during black and blue, uh, a drill that we do at the beginning of practice, people want to continue to go against him because he made them better. Okay? Um, he, he wasn't always hoping, but whenever he was, people listened. And, and he just he gives outstanding effort. He's not the, the fastest, he's not the strongest. But he lifts everyone up, and again, he, he kept the heartbeat of this team going, and, and he, he really is the heart and soul of the Bacon County football season uh, team for this 2012 season. And he's somebody that I'm going to miss greatly, and I, I, I hope and I pray that he continues to, to move forward and, uh, and just touches other people's lives. Uh, this award goes to Kyrie James. <laughs> It's a statistical award. It's 
It's based on uh, their, their type of statistics, how they play, and big hits. So this goes to Drew Green for being the team's leading tackle. The next young man I want to bring it up. Uh, is he awake? You got him. You got him. You got him. <laughs> You know who he is. The, the next young man, I want to go ahead and I want to read off his statistics. He had, he finished the season with 91 tackles, 51 solos, 40 assists, one cause fumble. He had three sacks, six tackles for loss, and two block kicks. But he finished the season with 17 big hits. And what we mean by a big hit, a big hit, when I watch film and I look for a big hit, it's not just a hit when you hit somebody and you fall to the ground. When you hit somebody, they disappear from the street. When you hit somebody, they disappear into the ground. When you hit somebody, they disappear because they got to get up and walk out the game or be carried out of the game. And this young man has 17 hits like that this season and probably I was punishing tap. He deserves this award. He gets this award for being the team's second leading tackler and leading the team in big hits. Board goes to Rich Crawford. Sledgehammer Award, 
And for those of you that don't know, we have a young man every week that carries a sledgehammer out that leads our team out in the tub. That sledgehammer award each week is presented on Thursday to the young man who had the biggest hit the week before. Not the most big hits necessarily, but the biggest hit. And what we do is we let them sign their name to it throughout the year. And at the end of the year, it's pretty simple. The guy that got to carry this, this sledgehammer out the most is who gets this award at the end of the year. And that's why we feel like it's so important. Because when you walk in our locker room, every locker room I've ever been in, as long as I've been a head football coach, there's a set of goals up on the wall. And the number one goal on the very bottom that everything starts with is be the most physical team. Period. And that's what this award is all about. Who was the most physical football player on the field? Who was the guy that nobody on our team or anybody else's team wanted to hit on Friday night? And I guarantee if you go ask them two fullbacks from by day that's still in the hospital after he got through hitting them on defense, they'll tell you this man deserves this award. So the Sledgehammer Award this year, 2012, goes to Richard Cross. <laughs>
buys our uniform for us every year with his donation. So this is the first football goes to Mr. Ted Murray and Blueberry Plantation. <laughs> Second football goes to a gentleman that, <clears throat> that, um, that since I got here has really done you know, tremendous, tremendous things for our team. Not only is he a, a major part of our booster club, but more than that, if, if there's any one guy that I've met since I've been here that that is that epitomizes, you know, being a true Raider fan, a guy that, that only believes the best in the kids that play for us, the best in the kids at our school, um, he is the absolute most optimistic guy I've ever met. Because it don't matter how bad we play or how bad we look, he's going to find some good things to talk about. Sometimes I, 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 I want to tell him he needs to come watch the same film I'm watching. But, uh, but he always finds good things. And the amount of time that he spends with our program is just, you can't count it in, 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 in hours, I can assure you. So I want to tell you how much I appreciate him in the things that he's doing, not just for our program, but, but as a great friend to me, and that goes to Brent Johnson.
Alright, um, I believe Brent. I believe Brent's next. He has a, uh, a couple of spe special presentations, and I'm going to, uh, uh, Coach Boo and I will close it out that time.
before I go on, I got to ask you, actually have to thank one person. Uh, <laughs> for those of you that don't know, uh, I actually, I mean, we have a lot of kids, as you can see, but I actually personally have a lot of kids. <laughs> <laughs>
I knew that this program would never be the same for you. That doesn't mean it can't be great. That doesn't mean it can't be better. But this group of seniors have made one heck of a mark on Bacon County High School. And, and it's been very special for me to have two years to coach them. And I hope that you guys know, along with everyone else on this side of the room, that I'm only a phone call away. And anything that you ever need, I'll be there for you. But I'd like to get our seniors around the call. Thank you very much, and thank you for coming.